Have you heard about Sotheby's? What did they pull in their February auction? Luckily for you, Nugget Lover, in today's video, we will be talking about the Sotheby's February auction, where they pulled out a CryptoPunk lot. I bet you haven't heard about it. Well, let's start this video to know more. Last February, Sotheby's held an auction called Punk It. This was the auction house's first evening sale that was only for NFTs. The lot was made up of 104 CryptoPunk, which are part of a famous and historic PFP NFT collection made by Larva Labs in 2017. The lot was thought to be worth between $20 million and $30 million, but it didn't sell at all. NVM decided to HODL, the item seller who goes by the Twitter handle 0x650D wrote on Twitter. After drinks and a panel, the crowd mingled while waiting for the auction to start. Suddenly, it was announced that the seller had pulled the lot from the auction. The people who went, however, were welcome to stay and enjoy the after party where DJ Seed Phrase played. It's not unusual for a lot to be pulled from a sale, but it happens less often at single lot sales. People started to talk about what had caused the sudden change. Nabil Charanya, was one of the few people there who had a paddle for the auction. He was there with another managing partner, Brandon Buchanan, to represent Metaphor Capital, an investment fund that focuses on NFTs and is backed by Andreessen Horowitz. Tarania said, we are not upset. We want the seller to get the price they want and we don't want to be at odds with them. Some people thought that the seller might have gotten an attractive cash offer while the NFT community on Twitter cheered what they thought was the seller's decision to hold on for dear life. Some people thought that the seller didn't sell because he or she thought these assets would be worth more in the long run. The idea that it was all a publicity stunt was shut down because it wasn't big enough news to be worth the cost of pulling out the sale. Other people there said that even though the CryptoPunk bundle was valuable, it wasn't very interesting, so it wasn't a big surprise that bidders didn't come up with competitive offers. The bundle was made up of what are called floor punks. These are punks from the collection that don't have anything special or rare about them, so they are the cheapest. Even though it's cheap for a crypto punk, it's not really that cheap. The least expensive punk, number 7456, which shows a black woman with green eyeshadow, sold yesterday for 59 ETH or $150,000. In the end, it might have been just bad timing, since the cryptocurrency market isn't what it used to be. The team at the auction house could not have known that the news that Russia had invaded Ukraine would cause the value of crypto to drop so much. Although the top NFT collectors and influential people like Colborn Bell, Ja Rule, and Farouk Sarmad were in the room, there didn't seem to be much talk of war. Instead, they were happy to talk and network. Anoop Kansupada, a manager at the NFT platform Nifty Gateway, said before the auction started that the auction would be historic, but the list of people who would be there was the real draw of the night. Kansupada told Art News that it was all about the people. These people wouldn't be at a typical Sotheby sale. This didn't change when the lot was taken away. The room was shocked when a representative of the house said that the only lot of the night had been sold. It turned out that the bundle of 104 CryptoPunk, which are highly valued NFTs that often sell for millions of dollars, had been used by the bundle's owner to get a loan of $8.3 million. The loan was made possible by NFT Fi, a marketplace for loans backed by NFTs, and MetaStreet, a startup of increasing the liquidity of NFTs. Connor Moore, one of the founders of MetaStreet said, we reached out to 0x650D as soon as we heard that they had pulled out of the Sotheby's sale. David Choi, another co-founder of MetaStreet, 
with a background in art history and traditional art financing, said, He didn't even know this market was real until we started talking. I think it became clear quickly that the loan could be a good thing. Given the tax implications and other things, he was very happy to go this route instead of selling. Even though 0x650D is in the first person to get a big loan with NFTs as collateral, this is the biggest loan of its kind that we know of. And it looks like the market of NFT loans is only getting hotter. According to NFTFi, the company has made more than $100 million in loans since it started in June 2020. As of April 14, 2022, $70 million of those loans were made in 2022 alone. This is still a market on the rise though. The art lending business is worth about $25 billion right now. Joe Charlumbus from the art financing company TPC Art Finance said that the demands for loans has been skyrocketing. TPC Art Finance offers traditional art-secured loans and has thought about getting into the NFT financing market. Since the COVID lockdown started, there has been a big increase in requests and overall demand for art financing, Charolumbos said. We've also gotten loan requests for what I guess you could call blue chip NFTs, CryptoPunks, and other similar things. But we'd like to see more stability in that market before we join it. One of our mentors said that the TPC Art Finance pays close attention to how an artwork or an artist's prices have changed on the secondary market. The firm will look at works that have only been on the market for a year. But the older the work, the more information there is about how it might do in the market. The information gathered is meant to answer one key question. What do we think we could get for the collateral at an auction on a typical day if we had to sell it because of a default? One of our mentors said. But he did say that judging the value of a work is often very personal. Choi and Moore of Metastreet look at lending strictly in terms of numbers. Choi said, it's less about where the data came from and more about the data science. Moore added, there's a joke that three months in crypto is a year in traditional markets. With CryptoPunks, there are usually 10 to 15 transactions a day and about 15 to 20 million dollars worth of volume traded every week. And it can all be tracked. So yes, there is a lot of information to sort through. We can keep track of the volatility and liquidity of different NFTs, which helps us decide what is credit worthy. You can get a good idea of prices in real time, Moore said. But even with all this information, the markets for NFTs and the value of cryptocurrency in general are known for being very unpredictable. This $8 million loan has a 90-day term, one of our mentors from TPC Art Finance said about the 0x650D deal. That says a lot, I think. Investors might be happy with the short-term value of NFTs, but they tend to be more cautious about the market as a whole. So who is NFTFi? NFTFi is a company in the non-fungible token lending industry that expects to see massive growth in the sector where crypto holders have the chance to earn returns on their capital or buy digital art from top collections like CryptoPunk at steep discounts. The NFT lending market is still young, but one of our mentors says that there is a lot of room for growth. He said that the company's platform has already helped with thousands of loans, allowing NFT investors to use the money locked up in digital art. If an NFT owner wants to sell their asset, they can go to NFTFi, connect their wallet to the platform, and list an NFT as collateral. As soon as a borrower accepts an offer from a lender, the NFT is locked up into a smart contract escrow. While in escrow, the NFT can't be used until either the loan and interest are paid in full or the borrower stops paying. In the case of a default, the lender takes ownership of the NFT, which they might get for a very low price. One of our mentors said that the NFT lending only makes up about 0.5% of the entire NFT market when talking about how the market is right now. 
when compared to traditional lending markets, which one of our mentors said are usually worth 10 to 20% of the asset class itself. Further strong growth can be expected in the NFT lending as more people realize they can use their NFTs as collateral instead of selling them. One of our mentors told us that the peer-to-peer -peer platform, which got a new version earlier this month, has been used to make a number of large loans recently. One of the biggest loans seen on the platform was from an NFT owner who put up 104 NFTs from the CryptoPunk collection as collateral for an $8.32 million loan. According to the company's Twitter account, another example is a $1.4 million loan on a piece from the Autoglyph collection. Other important projects have also been done through the platform. For example, in March, one person used an NFT from the popular Doodle collection to get a loan without interest to help Ukrainian refugees. One of our mentors said, a lender quickly stepped up with a loan with no interest, and the user was able to drive the truck from Finland to the Poland-Ukraine border. The CEO of NFT5 says that CryptoPunk, Board Apes Yacht Club, and Artblocks are the most popular NFT collections used as collateral, and that loans totaling tens of millions of dollars have been made through the platform using each of these collections. Since this is a marketplace for loans, he said that both borrowers and lenders can set their own terms. The parties make transactions using both wrapped ETH at the stable coin die. Overall, NFT sales may be going up and down, but it's clear that the lending market is here to stay, said the CEO of NFT Fi. Now you know about Sotheby and the CryptoPunk lot that they pulled from their February auction. Now let's talk about MetaStreet. What is MetaStreet? MetaStreet is a liquidity routing and scaling solution for NFT collateralization platforms. It announced today that it had received $3 million in seed funding and $11 million in initial protocol liquidity to jumpstart the growth of quickly growing collateralized NFT lending market. MetaStreet is the largest provider of capital for DAI on NFTFi.com, which makes up a large part of the volume of collateralized NFTs. Even though the number of NFT transactions skyrocketed, to $17 billion in 2021, NFT back loans only made up $50 million, or less than 1% of the market. MetaStreet gives this new market the basic infrastructure it needs for capital to flow freely by parameterizing and automating the process of underwriting and executing fixed rate NFT backed loans. In November 2021, Medistry put up a class of 10 autoglyph as a collateral worth of $1.4 million die. This was the first loan of $1 million in the history of NFT debt. David Choi, co-founder and CEO of Medistry, said, By adding the centralized financial infrastructure to this new digital economy, Medistry makes it possible for true proto-nations to live and grow and it grows the GDP of the metaverse. Our plan to solve liquidity problems in the metaverse through democratization is the first step toward shaping this change. Connor Moore, co-founder and CEO of MetaStreet, said that even though the metaverse is new now, it will continue to change faster than any other technological innovation we've seen so far. This is because open-sourced and interoperable technologies lead to hive mind development and network effects. We are still excited about the chances to come up with new ideas and meet the growing need for liquidity solutions in the metaverse. We expect the number of NFT transactions to keep growing in 2022, especially in the metaverse and gaming sectors, which are growing very quickly said Tom Smith, a partner at Dragonfly. We want to help the people who make the tools that will help the nft backed debt market reach normalized penetration rates and grow along with the rest of the NFT market. MetaStreet plans to use the seed funding 
to help its own plan to grow. While the initial protocol liquidity will be used to get collateralized lending going, while the market learns more about it. Dragonfly Capital led this funding round, which also included strategic investors like Ethereal Ventures, Sfermion, Nascent Capital, Delphi Infi NFT, Alliance, Seed Club Ventures, Animoca Brands, Republic Realm, Vault Capital, Curve Capital, CMT Digital, Bitscale Capital, QCP Capital, Big Brain Holdings, and Torion. How MetaStreet works MetaStreet is a liquidity routing and scaling protocol for NFT collateralization platforms. It was started in 2021 by David Choi, Ivan Sergeyev, and Connor Moore. The goal of the protocol is to improve capital efficiency in the NFT-backed lending ecosystem by a lot. This will be done through automated underwriting processes and mitigation waterfalls, which will allow market participants to access and control the asset class with an optimized risk or return profile that matches how they see risk. MetaStreet makes it easy to make money by routing liquidity to NFT collateral through an algorithm. The protocol has a number of algorithmic capital vaults that generate diverse yields through automated underwriting, aggregation, and execution of NFT-backed notes. Put up capital to earn interest from my diversified portfolio of NFT-backed notes. Choose investments that match your interests and how willing you are to take risks. Sell note. Notes backed by NFTs can be sold right away, and everything is clear. MetaStreet terms are updated in real time to make it easy for you to use NFT collateral platforms. The metaverse is quickly growing. As a leader in the digital economy, you need to figure out which non-financial transactions can be trusted and which ones can't. Adding to the metaverse GDP MetaStreet is the decentralized interest rate protocol for the metaverse. It was made so that the new virtual economies could grow their GDP on their own. MetaStreet helps local governments reach their goals of protecting the public's health and raising standards in the private rented sector. We have seen for ourselves how bad housing conditions can ruin the lives of people who live there. It was made when experienced practitioners, business process engineers, and software engineers got together to make specialized, innovative, and high-quality software. It is now used by some of England's most important housing regulators. That's it for this video, Nugget Lover. Remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you feel like we've delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person. As a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you on your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video, but it isn't until you actually take action that you'll start to see results. See you on the next one.